Dad, is there something you want? Yes, there is, to connect with this girl right here. Now, come on, pretend I'm not your dad. We're just a couple of friends kicking it in a juice bar. What's a juice bar? OK, a malt shop, whatever. Dad, no, I don't. No, who's dad? Who's dad? I'm, I'm Marcus from biology. Hey, Haley, how's it going with you and Dylan? Has he tried anything inappropriate with you, girl? <laughs> a malt shop sipping an egg cream. Like Phil Dunphy, the dad on the TV show Modern Family, many parents try to be their child's best friend, but clinical psychologist Dr. Wendy Mogul argues that should not be the goal. John, in her new book. In her new book. Sorry, I was writing lessons, quest, more <laughs> questions about my daughter down. In her new book, Voice Lessons for Parents, What to Say, How to Say It, and When to Listen, she says that using certain communication <laughs> techniques can help kids be successful. Your pitch, how fast you talk, your tone of voice, and body language all play an important role. The book is published by Scribner, an imprint of Simon & Schuster, a division of CBS. Dr. Wendy Mogul, good morning. <laughs> Were you what taking you notes? I was, yeah. I was both really was. <laughs> taking notes, taking notes and extra questions. I don't even know where to begin. Um, anywhere. Anywhere. Well, it, so what interests me is it's, there's the problem of being their friend. And then with teenagers, it's sometimes just hoping that you're not their enemy. Yes. And uh -huh. understanding what they're going through. So let's start with uh, young girls. What are we misunderstanding when our daughter comes down for breakfast in the morning about what her life is like? So our four-year-old daughters are as articulate as any head of state on the planet. <laughs> yeah. And we mistake their verbal sophistication for emotional maturity. So they're still four. They don't have much life experience, but they have tremendous vocabularies and a great passion for arguing into you into any perspective they wish. They're like little tiny attorneys. Mm -hmm. And the four-year-old <laughs> boys can barely talk yet. Mm -hmm. But what he said about teenage girls, I think, is really interesting. Because you said that, you know, that's part of the that's part of the hardest stage of life for mothers and their teenage daughters. That to me was fascinating. Because what the teenage daughters do is they download all of their distress Every, and now everybody's so connected by technology, so they can just text mom distress all day long. And then the mothers are in tremendous anguish about the daughter's problems, and they predict, they mistake the snapshot of their daughter for the epic movie of her life. And so mother is suffering, the daughter's fine. She just handed it all over to mom and off she goes. You say my don't, go ahead. Well, my daughter is such a lawyer, she almost wears a powdered wig. Um, <laughs> the, um, so you have a great kind of uh, device here for how parents should think about their daughters and sons, the, the niece, explain that. Yes, so you can think of your son as an exchange student from Kazakhstan. <laughs> and the reason to do this is to, because if you take the position of a cultural and a temporary cultural anthropologist, then you think, let me find out the ways of these people and what they're interested in. And these video games, this is fascinating that my son likes to watch people play video games instead of being outside hanging out with his friends. And it's Fascinating and temporary because he's leaving. You think of your daughter as a visiting niece from a distant state. And she is the daughter of your sister that you're not crazy about. So again, this gives you some distance and perspective instead of this child is me, the entire badge of my worth, Everybody is judging me based on this teenage behavior, and that gives them tremendous leverage over your self-esteem. You get desperate and panic. Mm. And I, then I, your voice rises, mm -hmm. and your pitch gets higher, and you jab your finger. Yeah, that was the only, uh, that's my mom, exactly right there. But very loud, very loud and shouty. There was no emotion. Um, but what about, parents, what about parents who say that they shouldn't treat their kids differently because of gender? Uh, so, for example, 
if you, we were talking about the four-year-old girl and how articulate she is and the 15-year-old girl and how much she pressures you to let her do whatever she wants. The four-year-old boy often can barely speak yet. Mm -hmm. The 15-year-old boy <laughs> is in his room with his door closed for a good reason. What, what is that reason, Dr. Mogul? Well, <laughs> you I, tell? just use your imagination. No, I was a 15-year-old 15 15 boy. I remember. And so, and then the mother's heartbroken because that boy was the best boyfriend she ever had in her whole life. Mm. He looked like, if this is a biological family, he looked like her husband did when he had a full head of hair and didn't have a paunch yet. And he followed mom around and said, can I live right next door to you when I grow up? And you're the best mommy in the whole wide world. And then he stops talking. Mm. And then parents' paranoia kicks in because they think, what is he doing in there? And what is his future going to be like? Dr. Mogul, <laughs> yes, you ma say your child's behavior does not make you a bad parent. And I'm imitating you right now. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Because I would take, if, if my child had done something, I would certainly blame myself for something I didn't do or I did too much. And you said, listen, parents should relax because all teenage behavior is temporary and it's unpredictable. And that's just how it is. And we sort of want them to go from being little buddy to junior statesman yes, and yes, completely yes. skip adolescence entirely. But then we send them off to college where there's no supervision at all. Mm. So we want them to make cheap mistakes while they're young. I am so glad my children are potty trained and employed so I can just Me pass too. this book on to other people. <laughs> Thank you so I, much. I, however, am clinging to it. <laughs> <by> <laughs> <a nice laughs> rap. Thank you. The name of the book is Voice Lessons for Parents is on sale wherever you like to buy your books. We'll be right back.